Hello everyone and welcome to Get Your Google On, Help for Struggling Readers. As we know, almost 30% of Canadian students struggle with some form or type of reading. So this session will really look at it from a Google Apps for Education perspective. My name is Nicole Acousta. I'm a, currently a Curriculum Educational Technology Facilitator with Parkland School Division in Alberta. I am an experienced K-12 teacher, former assistant principal and special ed coordinator and I often uh, work with several uh, organizations, you can see some of them listed, that do have some kind of technology focus uh, to them. And so let's move on. Today what you're going to see is uh, a number of instructional strategies under two categories. And then with those strategies, what are some tools and resources that you can use? And finally, at the end, even more resources for you to take a look at. If you do want to take a copy of these notes that I'm showing you, they are found at that bit.ly uh, site. It is case sensitive, so feel free to go to it and get your own copy for your use. So let's move on and have uh, have some good times learning a little bit here together. I just need to move up my screen. You can see me just fooling around a little bit there. Uh, our first section has to do with how do we get students to influence? Um, you know, getting the facts and, and highlighting and getting information, we can certainly show them that and work through that. But when it comes to inferencing, we find our students are you know, this is where they really don't get the connection. What, what's next? So important for us to work through that. And so we're going to take a look at these particular five tools uh, for you. The first one, what I'd like you to do is it's an, actually a YouTube video and we're going to watch it right now. And while we're watching it, I want you to think about how do we actually get students to use all of their senses when they're reading? So think of the five senses, think of the power these images and symbols have, and uh, go ahead and write those down while you're watching if you'd like.
All right, so uh, you had an opportunity to watch that video. W what did you think? You know, how does reading affect our hearing? What does it sound like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? Uh, what does it feel like? So think, so think about those and, and of course, Right now, we're gonna take a look at the power of images and how can we use images to help students be better readers. So one of the examples I'm going to show you, of course, is, uh, you know what, instead of watching and showing that awesome video that uh, from YouTube, I could have just given you all this slide to read and uh, some of you would have made visual images and would have connected reading to it and others would have go oh yeah this is just some text showing those types of things whether it's through audio or through video um, uh, giving students a variety of ways of integrating and communicating and learning how to read in a variety of ways is important so here's the first uh, concept we're going to go through is uh, it's a critical thinking concept uh, set up by the Critical Thinking Consortium or tcsquared.ca. Just take a look at this uh, picture for a moment and just take it all in. Now, what we're going to do in a regular classroom, I certainly would have this on a screen or each group of two or three students would have the actual uh, picture uh, beside them so they could look at this. Right now with me, I need to go to another tab so that we can continue the actual process of how do we get kids to, to really dig deep into what comes out of a picture. There's lots of information in there and they may not know where to look or how to look or ask questions. So this template that will be coming up now is a fantastic template called Explaining the Image and it has our W5 questions. And on here, the way I work through it with students is of course, go through it as a whole class, and it can be, your image can be from any content area, from any topic that you're studying with the students. Uh, any image will give out some answers. So you can see it's three columns. We have the questions here. Now, if I have early year students, I would have less text here and maybe more visuals. Uh, this, of course, for middle years of high school, some good prompting questions and as the kids get used to using this template over the school year you could decide to use less text. You also would get kids to uh, go through this together or we have groups of them if they're used to using it I would say hey you know what you three are group A and I want you to look at this row answer who is in the image of the image I just showed you go to the third column and fill in evidence and observations first, talk about it, answer those questions, and then I want you to come to the middle one from that. And how does that relate to you today? Uh, I could have specific inferencing questions for students to go through and prompt them through. Uh, and then how do they know by going back to the evidence, is that true? You know, is that plausible? Talk about plausibility. Next group, of course, I would get them to do this if we're not doing it as a whole class. Um, this can be easily done on a Google document. You can see that's what I'm using. And so we would have each group writing. Once we get to the point where everyone has written, you can get kids to get up and do a jigsaw activity where you have one student per section, A, B, C, D, E, together as a group and share their learning the evidence as well as the inferences and then as a group a new group of uh, five get them to write down what their group's summary explanation would be after learning all about the image with all the appropriate details and suggestions as a whole class then we can sit down and look at the different groups information from the summary explanation and make one class explanation and this is an important step for teachers to go through to really prompt you know here's some similarities between what different groups are saying here's some differences do we accept them why 
all that kind of stuff. So a great activity for students to really deconstruct an image and, and take information out. The next one is uh, from the Stepping Out program. I'm a Stepping Out trainer uh, from Pearson, originally developed in Australia. These literacy strategies are actually for grades 6 to 12. Uh, and this one again, similar to what you just saw in Explain the Image, three columns. Uh, again, this is on a slide, but certainly do this on a Google document. Um, here I'm showing the example of Romeo and Juliet, but you could have a video transcript here. You could have audio transcript here, so it doesn't have to, have to originally come from text. It, it can have audio or video pieces. So the it says is the actual text. So what is actually being said here? The other thing is, is each time I write down a piece of text, I would use a new row with a line so that it keeps it organized for students. So I could have maybe four or five different rows, each with a different text. Uh, if we're studying a book and we're going chapter by chapter, I could have one chapter of it says I say and so for chapter one. And then we could then, uh, as we get on to chapter two, have another it says I say and so for chapter two. So you can see how that goes. The I say is again, what do they understand? So that could be in point form they can input, they can use speech to text uh, to get their ideas down. Uh, they could have one recorder if you're doing small group work for this. And the inferencing, I don't have it here, but I, again, as a teacher up here, depending upon the subject, the content, etc., I would have some prompting questions of, you know, if you understand this, what does it mean to you now? What does it mean in 1950? That kind of thing. So prompting a little bit so that they can say, well, if we know this, this would occur, that type of thing. So it says I say, and so uh, a great literacy activity for you to use. The next one is actually taking a look at a document. So let's go back to our original document and I'm gonna bring down the toolbar so you can see this. Built into a Google document is a tools feature. So you just click on tools. You all have this if you're using Google uh, Drive and Google Apps for Education. And this research pane comes up. What's nice is I can, depending upon whatever the topic is, do a Google search without leaving my document. I can also do this in a Google slide, so think about that as well. And I can look just for images, and we'll do that in just a minute. If I'm working at the university post-secondary level, there's some great scholarly articles that might uh, interest me. Then there's quotes, looking uh, for quotes, a dictionary if I need it, and tables if I need some more stats or statistics or data. So just because uh, I'm interested in grizzly bears, this is some work that I'm doing on the habitat of grizzly bears, you can see that I can certainly do a search. I've got images here, and we'll dig deep into images in a minute. I've got something from Wikipedia, and you can see further down. So lots of pieces. But you notice when I hover over top some information, there's a preview piece for some of it, and here it gives me the preview. I can click on this, it takes me to a new tab and it would open it up if it's too small for me to read or I, I'm still interested in learning more. If I really like it and I'm in the research phase, I can insert the link right into my uh, document and so then it's ready for me to just click on, right? Uh, and if I do use the document, I can cite and then the citation will be down at the bottom of this page. I'll show it to you with the image piece. So again, I'm doing some research on grizzly bears. I look for images. Here's an important fact that you need to train all students to do. In Google, even in the research pane, the usage rights are not filtered. So make sure students every single time filter it properly. We need to be good digital citizens. Uh, the citation is set for K-12 to already, but those of you who are using APA, uh, this will at least be a good start for you uh, if you're using that. So for instance, I love this bear image and I want to use it right here in my document. Automatically, citation comes forward and then we will see it down. You can see that down at the bottom there. 
very nicely set up and you can talk about what do each of those crumbs mean in the link and where that comes from. So also works uh, with uh, any text as well. So once I'm done my research, I need to just close it and then we're ready to go. Very good research tool, easy uh, to use. Also great for students who get lost when they're using Google. So there's the inferencing piece. You've got five things that you can use there. Let's move on to summarizing. We have a lot of text, whether it's from textbooks, blogs, online websites, wherever we're reading, newspaper, news articles what do we need to do? So let's take a look. There's a few of these here. Uh, let's take a look at some Chrome extensions, apps, some uh, online websites that would help with summarizing. So the first one I want to talk to you about is called readability. And I just went to Wikipedia and again you can see uh, there's my theme grizzly bear. I just looked it up and here is what I find. Lots of great information but for some of our students, no matter what grade level, wow, that's overwhelming. So, it's also busy. So, readability declutters. So, once I go to the Chrome Web Store and I type in readability and I look for the extension, then I click on, once I've installed it, I click on readability and I can use this on any uh, current events area, any online areas, especially websites that are very busy. And then I click on read now, it cleans it up for me. And you'll see it just in a minute, it's going to open it up uh, in the same tab. A nice clean version of the article. I can always go back to the article, there's my original link. Um, and so then it gives me the opportunity to read something that's just about the text. Uh, now for some of our students that might be a little bit much. So we can take a look at different fonts. We can take a look at uh, definitely changing even the background. Look at this. We've got some students who really white glare a little bit much. So let's change the background uh, uh, and take a look at that. Let's change the size of the column. Uh, so that's very helpful and personalizes uh, the reading experience for students. But with readability, the decluttering may not be enough. So if I'm uh, already decluttered and I'm still overwhelmed by the amount of text and I can't read it, I can use a free Chrome extension called Speak It. For those of you that have the opportunity to have your students install the premium version of read and write for Google, I would say this is an opportune moment to use it. Uh, for those schools or students who cannot afford the premium subscription, Speak It will at least be the text to speech piece that you can use. The grizzly bear, Ursus arctos SSP, is any North American subspecies of brown bear, including the mainland grizzly. So you can see quite easy, Speak It has four different voices, two male, two female. You can change the speed in the extensions settings area in your Chrome. Uh, another way that you could read, that's still a little bit for some people, a little too mechanical, you can use Announceify. It actually opens a separate tab and then blurs out what is not being read. You're now listening to Grizzly Bear and Wikipedia.org. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. U A Californicus U A G S U A Horriblus U A Middendorfi U A Nelson I. The Grizzly Bear SSP is any North American subspecies of brown bear, including the mainland grizzly Kodiak bear. U and so you can see with Announceify, it actually blurs out uh, what is not being read, but you don't get, like Read and Write Google, you don't get the text actually highlighted when it's being read, but a little bit more human-like voice. So you can certainly use that for your students. Another fantastic Chrome app uh, that I share with staff and students is Newsala. 
it's uh, free. There is a pro version, but right now all our staff that are using Newsletter are using the free one. And it has new art news articles from around the world that are constantly added. So you can see the different categories here and up pops, you know, an overview every day if you go to the website. So let's go to this particular article on uh, the recent earthquake in Nepal and let's just make sure it's all loaded. You'll notice right away, right here, there we go, that there is a Lexile reading level. If you're not used to using Lexile reading levels, feel free to go to razkids.com and get their correlation chart. Some of you might use Fontes and Pinnell, and so if you're not sure what grade level, uh, you can certainly use that. If not, as a teacher, if you're signed in to your account, just above this word count will be an actual grade level piece that shows up. I'm not signed in right at this moment, so that's why you don't see it. But just take a look at what happens to the title when I hit the max, what happens to the word count, and let's look down here. Let's just do a quick scan of the information at the highest uh, reading level that this article has. So lots of great information, but still might be too high for your students. Well, let's go down to 530. Notice the word count changes as well as the title. S exact same uh, image. And here we go. Some nice headlines, uh, sub headlines for, uh, for, for students. Wow. So in my class, I could have up to five different reading levels for students, exact same article automatically for you. So it's a very good site for you to take a look at. The next one is a, an online website. You can use a free trial and try it out, but it's a rap hip hop type of site. Uh, students really like this because uh, uh, any content area is uh, put into a song and a video. And so I'm just going to go to the five things here, elements of a story, and I get you to listen to this one. It covers, of course, the, the setting, plot, characters, conflict, and theme. And what we noticed with this one in particular, uh, some of our grade three teachers really use this one a lot. And so when students are actually in, in you know, uh, essay mode or paragraph writing mode, you'll see them bouncing on their seats because they're uh, used to hearing this in their head. And so it reminds them while they're writing. So let's just listen in a little bit to this video. Check it out, yo. Yeah. Setting. That's like where it's going down. Could be the train compartment, a castle, or a town. Could be the Arctic winter light to build a fire. The temperatures dropping, excitement's getting higher. Setting sets the scene, so the scene seems set. Could be an Italian restaurant where we met. Setting gives us the where and the when. Could be modern day, the future, or way back when. Plot, character, conflict, theme. setting. Yes, these are the five things that you're going to be needing when you're reading or writing a short story that's mad exciting. And so there you go, you can see uh, how probably engaging that is uh, for students, uh, any grade level. So certainly take a look at vocabulary. 60 Second Recap is a, a website that is set up by a, a librarian who does 60 second recaps of all sorts of books. So let's go a little bit higher in our thought process. Let's let's see if she's got something in 1984. George Orwell's uh, piece. Oh, let me just make sure I've actually, there we go. Perfect. So you can see there's all the different results that I have here, but on the right, here's the recaps and you just need to click on any one of those. You can see she goes even deeper, not just the overview of the book, but for some books she even goes through symbols, characters, and she's quite the character. She's really fun to listen to. So again, you could embed this for students to either uh, have this for their pre-reading, you know, pre-listening before we actually get into the book, 
uh, or as they're doing research. So a great uh, website for you to use with your students uh, for literacy. Spark Notes is uh, as well a good place to get that information. So think Cole's Notes in print. This is now online. And so as it updates here, I just hover carefully over here. And of course, I just did 1984 with 60 second recap, but let's see what they have at Spark Notes. I will uh, give you a little uh, caveat to this website. Um, it does have mature content uh, on the sides, etc. So pay attention to that. Or if you're using it with students that you think it would just not work out, I would copy the notes into Google Drive and have that available for students without all the extraneous information that comes to it. So you can see sometimes they do have a video. Here's the context. So you would just click on the context and up it will pop and uh, give you some good information uh, about the context of the story. So a good place for you to get some information or updated information on uh, books. Middle years to high school is usually where they're at. Lit charts, same thing. They of course uh, uh, started SparkNotes but then uh, another group uh, decided to continue SparkNotes and then they started to do this. So you can see all the different books that are are here. Let's compare the 1984 lit chart notes uh, to the spark notes piece. They just uh, added a visualization tool for all the themes and so you can scroll over the themes uh, as soon as this is up and running and then when I scroll let me just bring this down here once it's ready you actually get to see the chapters and uh, how they're affected by class struggle. So you can see class struggles is in uh, something specific here and I could you know dig in quite deep if I wanted to in book three, chapter three uh, to see those uh, particular struggles. So that's new for uh, lit charts. Here again uh, background information uh, very well set out. Uh, the information's all online so I can uh, read through it or have it read to me if I'm using Speak It or Read Write Google. I can also download a uh, PDF uh, of the information, but you can see, wow, some great information for students to, to uh, use uh, when they're reading. If we're doing some, <coughs> excuse me, some research on any topic, I could even stick with my 1984 theme or could go back to my Grizzlies. Instagoc is an online interactive research tool where whatever the topic I've asked it to grok or research for me will come up. And uh, for those of you who's, who have ever used a visual thesaurus, similar. You can see there's pins here. So I can go through the computer said, well, here's some key facts. And so every time I say, yeah, that's good. This is about the book. Uh, yeah, so great. Oh, let's go to websites. So there are any great, well, I'm not going to do anything with baseball, but this one sounds good. It's probably just the book, but you know, that's important. Part one, chapter one. Oh, someone read, wrote something. Uh, any videos. Oh, there's an audio book. So we could look at that and any copyright free images, uh, I can take a look here and add those. The concepts and the notes, we we personally don't use those because of Google Drive, so it's good enough information for us. Up at the very top, there's a little difficulty slider. So I can slide it down and it goes down to about a grade two, three reading level for the same topic, all the way up to about a grade seven reading level. So I just got to get it moved over here. There we go. And it's movable and I can change things and I can X things and oh, if I want to learn more about the thought police, there we go. And it will give me even more stuff and so I can get more key facts, images, websites, etc. just based on this particular topic. Once I'm done getting my uh, visual ready to go, I can share it directly with students via URL or embed it into a website, class blog, etc. So either the teacher sets it up for the students or the students can uh, use it for their own research purposes. The next thing is a text compactor. So let me go back to that Wikipedia site that I got uh, Grizzly Bear on it. And 
let's just highlight the first two, if it'll allow me here, first two paragraphs. They're pretty long. And, oh man, I don't know if I could read all that. So I'm gonna copy and uh, paste that into the above box, step one. I'm gonna take my sliding bar, just like I saw at Instagram, but this does something different. Take it to 100%. So both top and bottom text are gonna be the same. Now watch the bottom text. I want only 50% of the information showing. Now, via an algorithm, the, the computer decides what's important. Uh, we can't change that, but it does a pretty good job. So let's look at 34%. There we go. So you can see it gives a little bit of less information, but gives me sort of an, a gist and overview. And I can use my Speak It tool to be able to have it read back to me if I so wish. So great, quick summarizing tool. The next and final one in regards to summarizing and reading is rewordify. So I can enter again any text. Let's use those two paragraphs from the Grizzly Bear information on Wikipedia. And it rewordifies my text. Now I can choose the settings and how high, how low. I can also learn the different words as well. Here, what's great is anything that's highlighted, look look what pops up. So instead of subspecies, which was in the original text, it says subgroup of a bigger group. So I might be able to learn that a little bit. Instead of, let's just get it down here, extinct, it says gone forever. So students get to learn a little bit of vocabulary, but also understand the content a little bit better with Rewordify. And finally, please take some time to take a look at these fantastic resources. Learn Alberta. Uh, the online reference center is full of amazing science resources for K to 12. Uh, amazing social studies resources, atlases, looking at different literature, listening to authors speak about why they chose the title they did and how to sound out their last name because it's kind of funny. Uh, in Parkland School Division, we also have various materials, specifically novels that have been scanned and uh, are OCR'd so that Read and Write Gold and Read and Write Google can read those particular novels that some students need to have read to them. To learn.ca, great site, especially for images. Go to their image database and pull out uh, images for you know that first part that I said you know get them get students to really get data from an image and learn about the image some background uh, previous background information some new information they'll learn lots to learn also has some great instructional resources in any subject area from K to 12. Discovery Education Canada is a uh, prescribed and uh, subscribed, excuse me, reading and streaming service with video, audio, uh, images, text. Uh, our school division has been uh, subscribing for five years and uses it uh, quite well. And also don't forget about Google. Yes, Google search is still a good thing, but if you do actually go to google.ca, get get yourself to look for a topic, go to search tools, all results, and choose by reading level. They have basic, intermediate, or advanced. See what happens to the resources when you choose a specific reading level. And then the last, second last, and third last ones, Read Works and Read Write Think, this is where you need to spend a lot of time they have a great set of lessons, step by step, how uh, teachers can actually dive into literacy strategies and instructional strategies for students to be able to read better, to build on their fluency, build on their comprehension, take time to go to those two pieces. And finally, for our early years, I couldn't resist. There's some amazing online books that you can read on a computer or even on a tablet. Uh, choose uh, whether to hear it read to you or you read it on your own. Unite for Literacy, those are free. So I hope you enjoyed the quick overview of 
getting your Google on, helping those struggling readers and empowering them to become really good readers. Again, my name is Nicole Acusta and uh, go out, share, enjoy. Think of one thing that you would do just from what you learned today in tomorrow's class.